HPing3 allows you to send various types of TCP IP packets, including TCP, UDP, ICMP, and RAW IP, and can be used for tasks such as firewall testing, advanced port scanning, and network performance testing. It has a range of options that can be used to customize the packets that are sent, including setting the source and destination IP addresses, ports, and flags. HPing3 is available on most Linux distributions, and there is also a Windows port available. It's commonly used by security professionals and network administrators as a part of their toolkit to test and monitor networks. To use HPing3, first, you'll need to install it on your system. I use Fedora, so this is the installation process. Once you have HPing3 installed, you can use it to send packets to a target IP address or hostname. First specify the target IP. C7 specifies that only 7 packets should be sent. S specifies that the packet should be a SYN packet, which is commonly used to initiate a TCP connection. When you run the command, hping3 will send ping packets to the target, and you should see the response from the target in the terminal. This is just a simple example of how to use ping3. There are many other options and features that you can use to customize the packets that are sent, as well as advanced scanning techniques for port scanning and other security-related tasks. Now let's move to the advanced usage of HPing3. Let's do firewall testing. HPing3 can be used for firewall testing by sending packets with different flags and payloads to see how the firewall responds. For example, you can use HPing3 to send packets with the RST or FIN flags to see if the firewall is configured to block those types of packets. HPing3 provides several advanced scanning techniques that can be used for port scanning and network discovery. For example, you can use the S or R flags to perform a SYN or RST scan, which can help identify open ports on a target system. In this command, the P option specifies the range of ports to scan, 1 to 65,535, and the S option specifies that a SYN scan should be performed. Note that some of these advanced usage examples can be used for malicious purposes, and it's important to use HPing3 responsibly and within legal and ethical boundaries. Let's do example for fragmentation. HPing3 allows you to fragment packets, which can be useful for testing how a target system handles fragmented packets. In this command, the F option specifies that the packet should be fragmented, and the D option specifies the size of the packet payload, in this case, we have 1,500 bytes. HPing3 can also be used for network performance testing by sending packets with different payloads and measuring the response times. For example, you can use HPing3 to send packets with different sizes and measure the round trip time, RTT, to the target. In this command, the D option specifies the size of the packet payload, 1,000 bytes, and the ICMPTS option measures the RTT using the ICMP timestamp option. HPing3 can also be used for IP address spoofing by sending packets with a fake source IP address. This can be used for testing how a target system responds to packets from a different IP address. However, IP address spoofing is illegal in many jurisdictions and should only be done in controlled environments with permission. In this command, the A option specifies the spoof source IP address. Just to warn you again, some of these advanced usage examples can be used for malicious purposes, and it's important to use it responsibly and within legal and ethical boundaries. To learn more about HPing3, use the man page. Here are some tips for you guys. HPing3 has a comprehensive manual page that lists all the available options and provides examples of their usage. 
Ping 3 requires root privileges to send raw packets, so you should always run it with sudo. Without sudo, you'll get an error message like operation not permitted. HPing3 has a verbose mode that provides more detailed output about the packets being sent and received. To enable verbose mode, use the V option. HPing3 supports several different packet types, including TCP, UDP, ICMP, and RAW. Try experimenting with different packet types to see how the target system responds. To test how a target system handles unexpected input, you can use their option to send packets with random data. HPing3 allows you to craft packets with custom flags and payloads, which can be useful for testing specific scenarios. For example, you can use the P option to specify a custom packet payload. HPing3 supports file input and output, which can be useful for automating tests or analyzing the results. For example, you can use the E option to save the output to a file. In conclusion, HPing3 is a powerful tool for network testing and troubleshooting with a wide range of features and options. It can be used for basic tasks like ping and traceroute, as well as more advanced tasks like packet crafting, performance testing, and IP address spoofing. However, it's important to use HPing3 responsibly and within legal and ethical boundaries, as some of its advanced features can be used for malicious purposes. With its flexible options and capabilities, HPing3 is a valuable tool for network administrators, security professionals, and anyone interested in learning more about how networks and protocols work. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the tutorial, be sure to subscribe for more. Also, you can comment down your suggestions. Thank you.